Flora. At this level, I would like you to take a look in your atlas. The flora of the lung, the context of the thorax, of the flora of the lungs, lateral view, posterior view, anterior view, the diaphragm and pericardial sac, the mediastinal surface of the right lung, the mediastinal surface of the left, left lung, the lung and the heart. Pleura. Each lung are enclosed in a serous pleura. The serous pleura sac that consists of two continuous membranes. The visceral pleura, the parietal pleura. The visceral pleura contains the lungs, including the surfaces within the horizontal and oblique fissures. The parietal pleura lines the pulmonary cavity. The pleura cavity are spaces between the layers of pleura containing capillary layers of serous pleura fluid, which lubricates the pleura surface and allows the layers of pleura to slide smoothly over each other during respiration. Providing cohesion that keeps the lung surface in contact with the thoracic wall. When the lung expands and fills with air and chest expands, allowing sliding to occur, such like a layer of water between two glass plates. The visceral pleura covers the lung is adherent to all its surfaces, provides with smooth, slippery surface, making it able to move freely on the parietal pleura. The visceral pleura dips into the lungs, fissures, so the lobes of the lung are covered with it. The viscera pleura is continuous with the parietal pleura at the helium of the lung. When the structures comprising the root of the lung, such as the bronchus and pulmonary vessels, inner the, and leave the lung, the parietal pleura lines the pulmonary cavities and adheres to the thoracic wall, the mediastinum, and the diaphragm. The parietal pleura consists of two parts. The costa pleura cover the internal surface of thoracic wall. The mediastinal pleura covers laterally aspects of the mediastinum and mass of tissue organs separating the pulmonary cavities and their pleura sacs. Diaphragmatic pleura covers superiorly the thoracic surface of the diaphragm on each side of the mediastinum. The cervical pleura, the pleura cupula, the domo pleura extends throughout the superior thoracic aperture into the root of the neck forming a cup-shaped pleural dome over the apex of the lung. The costa pleura separates from the internal surface of the thoracic wall, sternum 
ribs, costal cartilages, inner costal muscles, and membranes, and size of thoracic vertebrae by endothoracic fascia, thin extrapleural layer of loose connective tissue forms narrow cleavage plane as having a surgery when the separation of the costal pleura from the thoracic wall allowing the thoracic surgery to, to the surgeon to move and place instruments inside the thoracic wall preventing potential infection. The endothoracic fascia forms a thin layer of connective tissue between the diaphragm and the diaphragmatic pleura. The mediastinum pleura covers the mediastinum, the space between the pulmonary cavities, continuing with the costal pleura anteriorly and posteriorly. The diaphragmatic pleura inferiorly and the cervical pleura superiorly at the lines of pleural reflection and above to the root of the lung, the mediastina pleura continuous sheet between the sternum and vertebral column. At the helum of the lung, the mediastina pleura passes laterally, enclosing structures comprising the root, such as bronchus and pulmonary vessels, becoming continuous with viscera pleura inferior to the root of the lung. The mediastina pleura passes laterally, forming a double layer from immediately anterior to the esophagus to the lung, continuous with the viscera pleura as the pulmonary ligament. When the root of the lung is severe and the lung is removed, this layer or double layer of pleura hangs from the root like a large sleeve from the forearm. The diaphragmatic pleura becomes a part of the parietal pleura covering the superior surface of diaphragm, except along the costal attachment where it's covered with the pericardium. Fibrocerous membrane surrounding the heart. Thin layer of endothoracic fascia, the phrenical pleural fascia, connect, connects the diaphragmatic pleura with the muscular fibers to the diaphragm. The cervical pleura is dome-shaped gap of the pleura stack is the continuation of the costal mediastinal layers of pleura. Cervical pleura covers the apex of the lung, extending superiorly to th superior thoracic aperture into the root of the neck. Summit of the cervical pleura is two to three centimeters superior to the level of the medial third of the clavicle at the level of the neck of the first rib. Cervical pleura strengthened by extensions of the endothoracic fascia or the suprapleural membrane attaches to the internal waters of the first rib and the transverse process of C7 vertebrae. At the abrupt lines along with the parietal pleura change direction from one wall of the pleural cavity to another and this becomes the lines of pleural reflection. The external line of pleural reflections, sharp, abrupt, and opposed, or where costal pleura becomes continuous with the mediastinal pleura, 
hate the anterior part. The coastal line of pleural reflections is sharp, of course, when the coastal pleura becomes continuous with diaphragmatic pleura inferiorly. Vertebral line of pleural reflection is much rounder, gradual reflection where the coastal pleura becomes continuous with mediastina pleura posteriorly. The right and left external reflections of pleura are indicated by lines that pass inferomedially from the SC joints to the anterior median line at the level of the sternal angle. Over there, the pleural sacs come in contact and might slightly overlap each other. The external line of pleural reflection on the right side passes inferiorly in the median plane to the posterior aspect of the hypoid process. And laterally turns at that level. The external line of reflection on the left side passes inferiorly in the median plane to the level of work postal arch passing to the left margin of the sternum, continuing underneath to the sixth postal arch, making a notch shallower than the cardiac notch of the lung, a loss part of the pericardium which is the heart sac to become in contact with the anterior thoracic wall. The coastal line of pleural reflection passes obliquely across the 8th rib in the MCL, the 10th rib in the MAL, at the 12th rib and its neck or inferior to it. The vertebral line of pleural reflection parallels the vertebral column running in the paravertebral plane from vertebral level T1 through T12. The pulmonary cavities are not thoroughly occupied by the lung during expiration. So, the peripheral diaphragmatic pleura is in contact with the lowermost part of the coastal pleura. Pleural spaces over here are coastal diaphragmatic recesses and they are uh, called pleural lined gutters surround the upward convexity of diaphragm. Inside the thoracic wall, smaller pleural recesses are located posterior to the sternum, and the costa pleura is in contact with the mediastinal pleura. The pleural spaces are also mediastinal recesses. The left recess is potentially larger, and this means it becomes less occupied because of the cardiac notch in the left lung. Inferior borders of lungs move further uh, into pleural recesses during deep inspiration and retreat from them as the expiration of course. The lungs are vital organs in respiration and the function is to oxygenate the blood, bringing in far air into the venous blood in the pulmonary capillaries. Elastic recoil, one third their size when thoracic cavity is open. The cadaveric lungs might be shrunken. 
may be hard and maybe lost some color in appearance. Lungs are separated from each other by the heart, viscera, and great vessels of the mediastinum. The lung attaches to the heart and trachea by structures comprise the root of the lung. The root of the lung is made by structures entering and emerging from the lung at its heel, also called heels. And the bronchus and pulmonary vessels. The root is within the area of continuity between the parietal and visceral layers of pleura. Pleura sleeve or old mesopneumonium, known as mesentery of the lung. The root of the lung connects the lung with the heart and trachea. The helium of the lung is one area on the medial surface of each one of the lungs in the point at which of these structures forming the root, the main bronchus, pulmonary vessels, bronchial vessels, lymphatic vessels, and nerves enter and leave the lung. The helium can be considered to the area of earth where a plant root enters the ground. The horizontal as and the oblique fissures divide the lung into lobes. The right lung has three lobes, the left lung has two. The right lung is larger and heavier than the left, but it's shorter and is wider because the right lung of the diaphragm is higher and the heart and pericardium bulge more to the left. Anteriorly of the right lung is relatively straight. This margin of the left lung has a deep cardiac nudge, indenting the anteroinferior aspects of the superior lobe of the left lung, creating a thin, tongue like process of the superior lobe called lingula, extending below the cardiac nudge, sliding in and out of the costomediastina recess during inspiration and expiration. Each lung has an apex, three surfaces, three borders, and the apex is a blunt superior end of lung ascending above the level of the first rib in the root of the neck covered by cervical pleura. Three surfaces, which is postal, the mediastina, and diaphragmatic. And it has three borders, the anterior, the inferior, and posterior. At this level, please take a look in your atlas, like we uh, saw right the, uh, the long resections, the bronchoscopy of brachia, and bronchoscopy view of the different things, the left inferior lobe, the right middle lobe, the right inferior lobe, the and the bronchus along with the right superior lobe of the birds. The lungs have contact impressions that are formed by the structures adjacent to them such as 
that these markings provide clues to the relationship of the lungs with the surrounding organs. There is a room for the esophagus and cardiac impression for the heart on the mediastinal surface in the right lung. Cardiac impressions on mediastinal surface of left lung is large, larger, and there is a continuous groove which is prominent for the arch of the aorta, as well the extending thoracic aorta. The costal surface of the lung is large, smooth, and convex. Related to costal pleura, separating it from ribs, costal cartilages, and innermost inner costal muscles. Mediastinal surface of the lung is concave because it relates to the middle mediastinum containing pericardium and heart. Two thirds of the heart is to, to the left side. The pericardial cavity deeper in the left lung. The mediastinal surface includes helium and the receives roots of the lung, around which the pleura forms a covering or pleural sleeve. The pulmonary ligament hangs inferiorly from the pleural sleeve around the lung root. Diaphragmatic surface of the lung, concave, uh, becomes the base of the lung that rests on the dome of the diaphragm. The concavity is deeper in the right lung because the higher position of the right diaphragmatic dome which overlies the large liver. On the sides and posterior, the diaphragmatic surface bounds by a thin, sharp margin underneath the border that projects into the costal diaphragmatic recess of the pleura. Each lung has three borders, anterior border, costal and mediastinal surface which meets anteriorly overlapping the heart, the cardiac notch, indents this border of the length left lung. Inferior border circumscribes the diaphragmatic surface of the lung, separates thin surface from the costal and mediastinal surface. Posterior border costal and mediastinal surface and meets posteriorly is broad rounded lies in concavity by the side of thoracic region of the vertebral column. Trachea and bronchi. The main bronchi, primary bronchi to each lung pass inferolateral from the bifurcation of the trachea at the level of external angle to pleura or hilum of the lungs, walls of trachea and bronchi supported by horseshoe or C-shaped ring of hyaline 
cartilage. The right main bronchus is wider, shorter, and runs more vertically than the left main bronchus and it passes directly to the helum of the lung. The left main bronchus passes inferolaterally, inferior to the arc of the organ, and anterior to the esophagus and thoracic aorta, to reach the helum of the lung. The main bronchi enter the hila of the lung and branch in constant fashion within the lung to form bronchial tree. Each main bronchus divides in lower bronchi, secondary bronchi, two on the left and three on the right, and which supplies a lobe of the lung. Each lower bronchus divides into several segment bronchi, tertiary bronchi, that supply the bronchopulmonary segments. A bronchopulmonary segment is a pyramidal shaped segment of the lung with its apex facing the lung root and its base at the pleural surface is the largest subdivision of a lobe separated from adjacent segments by a connective tissue septa. It supplies by a segmental tertiary bronchus and a tertiary branch of the pulmonary artery is named according to the segmental bronchus supply it. It drains by the intersegmental parts of the pulmonary veins that lie in the connective tissue between and drain adjacent segments. It's surgically resectable. Far beyond and direct branches of the lower bronchi, beyond the segmental bronchi, are considered 20 to 25 generations of bronchis that eventually end in terminal bronchioles. Each terminal bronchiole gives rise to several generations of respiratory bronchioles and each respiratory bronchiole provides 2 to 11 alveolar ducts, each of which gives rise to 5 or 6 alveolar sacs lined by alveoli. The alveolus is the basic structure unit of gas exchange in the lung. New alveoli continue to develop until the age of Eight years by this time is more like 300 million alveoli. By this level, let us take a look at the in your atlas the trachea, the bronchi, and bronchopulmonary segments the right and left long in lateral, medial, and anterior and inferior views. Vasculature and nerves of lung and pleura. Each lung has a large pulmonary artery which supplies blood to it and two pulmonary veins draining blood from it. Right and left pulmonary arteries arise from pulmonary trunk at level of external angle, carrying poorly oxygenated venous flow to the lung for oxygenation. Each pulmonary artery is part of the root of the corresponding lung gives off its branch to the superior lobe before entering the helum. Within the lung, each artery descends posteriorly to main bronchus, dividing into lower and segmental arteries. 
arterial branch goes to each low and bronchopulmonary segment of the lung. On the anterior aspect of the corresponding bronchus, arteries and bronchi are paired in the lung, branching and running parallel courses. Pulmonary veins, two on each side, carry oxygenated arterial blood from the lung to the left atrium of the heart. Beginning in the pulmonary capillaries, the veins unite into larger and larger vessels. Intersegmental parts of pulmonary veins drain blood from adjacent bronchopulmonary segments into the intersegmental part of the pulmonary vein in the septa, separating the segments. Pulmonary veins run 